What's up everyone? All right, we're gonna try a bunch of drugstore makeup today. Some brand new stuff. I am so excited because some of these are like so new. I've not heard anyone talk about them. I don't really have more of an intro. Let's just dive in. I'm so excited. <laughs> I have to say I just filmed or what I thought I was filming the first few products and applying them and then realized I hadn't hit record. <laughs> So I wiped it all off. We're starting over because some of these, the good news is some of these, I'm about to give you a second impression instead of my first impression because now I've already figured a few things out. So cheers to that, I guess. A happy mistake, I guess. So first thing we're going to try is this tinted sunscreen from Neutrogena. This is new as far as I know it. It is the Neutrogena Mineral UV Tint Face Liquid. It's got SPF 30. This is in the shade light. It says it's got vitamin E, all this stuff. My thing is I love a few um, tinted sunscreens, but they're a little more expensive. Like my favorite Paula's Choice one is like 30 bucks, which you can get on Amazon now, by the way. I'll link it below because it's around 30. It is so good. That's still pricey, right? I mean, for me, like I go through facial skincare. I'm going to need more than this. Well, I'll just put on this first layer and then put it on another. I forgot I was putting on like sunscreen and not foundation. I was applying it like foundation. The one thing I've already realized about this from the first time I applied it a few moments ago is that it is not as oily as other tinted sunscreens are that I've tried, or just facial sunscreens, period, you know? Um, and that's pretty cool because especially if you're someone prone to oiliness or you just really don't like that look, a lot of them do give that like super greasy, like you can't even try to put makeup on top if you wanted type thing. Whereas this definitely feels like you can put foundation on top if you want, but I also think it looks fine on its own just as it is. So this reminds me a lot of the Paula's Choice one. So the other expensive one I really like is the Elta MD one. Um, it's called their UV Elements. I love that one. I have a little bit left of the one I'm trying to finish up because they, of course, all of these expire quicker than like other products, but I would totally repurchase that one again too, but it is pricier. This one feels a lot like both of them. I think there's a little less coverage in this versus like the Elta MD one, but this is very similar to that Paula's Choice one. Like the texture of it, it is very, very similar. So I, I'm excited to try those side by side sometime soon because I, I feel like this is very dupey, very dupey, but a lot cheaper, right? Like probably a, at least half the price. So I'm liking it. I feel like it didn't offer like a ton of coverage. I do feel like my skin looks a little more even than it was when we started. But again, this is not necessarily like, I like that I can wear this alone and my skin doesn't look super dewy. It doesn't look super anything, but it's a little more protected. It's a little more moisturized, you know that. So. I like it so far. I will definitely update you in a future video slash social media, which by the way, come follow me on social media. I'm at it's Jessica Braun everywhere. Pretty, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, I'd love to say hey to you. I post a lot on my Instagram and my Instagram stories. That's definitely like the social place that I am very, very active on. Yeah, you just get bonus content, you know, like all the Jesse you could ever need, probably more than what you want. So I have a primer I wanna use. This is the L'Oreal Prime Lab pore minimizer primer. So this says it's got, this is what was very interesting to me. It says it's got AHA, LHA, and BHA, like a complex, 1% of that. So it does say, use as the last step in your skincare routine, can be used alone or under foundation. I'm like, right, because it's a primer. Okay, got it. But it does say, sunburn alert, this product contains an alpha hydroxy acid that may increase your skin sensitivity to the sun and particularly the possibility of sunburn. So for an everyday primer for myself, I don't know, especially in the months where I'm even more outside than normal, like in the summer, I don't know that I would wanna risk it. I have slightly more sensitive skin, so maybe if you've got like the toughest skin in the world, you wouldn't care, but just something to be aware of. So I found that interesting. I'm like, then why would you put it in there? I don't know. So something to be aware of if you know that your skin might react negatively to that maybe don't do it. <laughs> but they had a few other primers in this line. This is just the one I was interested in. So it's kind of like a clear pink hue, but it's gonna go away. So it definitely doesn't ha quite have, I'm just gonna put it on half. I'll show you why in a sec. I mean, I bet you can guess why. It doesn't have quite that like silicone velvety feeling I always expect in a pore minimizing like primer, but it kind of feels like a hybrid between like a tacky, like the e.l.f 
oh, what's that called? Like that sticky primer they have, you know? It's like a hybrid between that and a pore filling one. So that's kind of interesting and I kind of like the idea of it, but we've got it on half my face because we're gonna try this foundation and I wanna see, well, I wanna show you well, we're gonna see, because the first time I felt like I noticed the difference between the primer side and the non-primer side. I wanna see this time around. Like I said, maybe it was a perfectly happy accident that I had to film this again, because I'm getting to see it with a second go round of eyes, set of eyes, <laughs> okay. The foundation, it's the Revlon Skin Caring Foundation. It's part of their Illuminance line. I don't even know if it's a full on line, but it has 5% squalane and hyaluronic acid. So. Generally, everyone's getting into that skincare game and they're putting skincare into products. My big thing is, you know, I wouldn't read too heavily into any makeup y skincare claims. A, you'd have to use that product every day. For someone like me, or maybe you have like a couple foundations you toggle between, you might not get the benefits if you're not using it every day, you know. But also, the amount in there might be kind of low. How much you actually put on your skin, does it give you the same benefits? So, there's a lot that goes into it, but I'm kind of part of the camp that I'm like, well, but if there's some good skincare benefits in it, why not? It's not gonna hurt me, you know what I mean? If anything, it'll help. And if it only helps a little bit, I think that's cool too. So just one of those things to kind of think about cause since a lot of brands are doing this, they're infusing skincare into their products, which again, I think, why not? So I got the shade 109. It's a little light for me, it'll work. And so wearing a turtleneck helps because then you can't, but it's definitely, if I do end up liking this enough, I'm gonna get at least one shade up. But it's got a nice pump. I, I was just excited, okay? I was excited to see a new new stuff from Revlon. I've got a couple Revlon items. I feel like I haven't said Revlon in a video in a while. Like there just haven't been a lot of big launches that have excited me the way that like many other drugstore brands have done. So I did do a new from Revlon little Instagram reel TikTok type thing. Um, I can link below if you wanna check it out. I was just very excited about this. So we're gonna do the side without the primer first and I'm gonna put a nice sizable amount on because I feel I felt like it was enough with one layer as long as I had enough there but I don't know it looked a little weird when I put a second layer on top is I guess my point so I'd rather just yeah you can see that this is pretty light for me uh oh Uncle Fester's coming out to play baby it's funny I used to make that joke and now that Wednesday is popular it's like you know I don't know I haven't even finished I've watched the first few episodes and I haven't picked it back up because it's gonna be one of those shows I just watch on my own and I'm kind of behind now. So I don't even know, is Uncle Fester like a part of the series? So, it kind of looks pretty, right? Like it's kind of glowy. I, I do think it looks nice, but like I said, once I put a second layer on, it started to look weird. So I think it might be one of those kind of finicky products. We're gonna see. So I wanna put the same amount, like a full pump, on my other cheek and let's just see how if it looks any different with the primer on this side. Do my pores look smaller? Have they disappeared yet? <laughs> okay, so obviously I've not done anything in my T-zone, but with primer, without, I feel like it looks better with the primer, right? I'm trying to decide, like I've got a little scratch on my cheek, so like there's, from Felicity by the way, because I need to trim her nails because they need to be trimmed apparently every day. But anyway, I just, I feel like it looks a little more flawless on this side. So that was pretty surprising to see. And it's not even necessarily the pore filling. I just feel like it's provided like a nice even base and kind of helped with the texture so that it looks a little more even versus this side. Maybe I'm seeing things, you tell me what you're seeing in the camera, because I feel like sometimes you guys can see it a little bit better. I mean, I'm literally looking at a viewfinder. I tried applying this with a brush as well. Um, it was okay, I definitely preferred the look of it with a sponge, but again, sponges shear things out, so you, you know, I just had to apply a little bit more. And I'm using that sponge from Amazon with the flat side that Taylor recommended. It's so good. I need to just order more. But of course I have a, like a few extras still of my other favorites, the Paw Paw sponge. They feel the exact same. Like I don't feel like there's a difference in the sponge. It's just the shape of this that I've really been enjoying that flat side is so, so nice. Yeah, I just, I think that the primer side looks a little bit nicer. I think that this finish is nice. It's not as super glowy, but you can definitely see a little glow there. And I'll be excited to try this in the right shade. So verdict still out. I'm liking it so far. Like I said, I think it's slightly finicky but I, I just kind of want to mess with it some more and see what looks best with it. And I'd also be curious to try it with like a glowy primer underneath and really like amp that up. But so far so good, definitely medium coverage. And I really do feel like I almost need a little bit more over there, but I don't, here, 
I can show you what it looks like and why it looked weird when I did a second coat. I don't know, maybe it was just that first time because I was using a brush for part of it too and I think that just looked streaky and weird. I mean, I feel like that looks fine, but I just, the primer side definitely looks better. Okay, moving on. The concealer we're gonna try is from Revolution. I spotted this, I wanna say at Target the other day. It's their IRL filter finish. So in real life, filter finish, soft matte concealer. I got the shade C5. I think it's, especially compared to the super light foundation, I think it's gonna be a little light, but I actually think, or a little bit dark, but I actually think this is a great concealer shade for me. So anyway, just bear with me. It might look a little odd, but first thing I noticed about this, the doe foot, isn't that interesting? It's like veered back. I don't know that I've ever used one that's quite like this. I mean, they're all similar, but you know, it's just slightly different. So it definitely feels like a thinner consistency. It looks not bad especially comparing like with without. It's brightened a bit. I feel like I'm really seeing it though. You know what I mean? Like it's just like obvious. Let me try it with maybe just my finger and see how that looks. I feel like I just tend to like a concealer. It's a little bit thicker than this and I don't mean like thick, but there's kind of a difference. Like I almost feel like some of them have just a little bit of oomph to them and it makes it, in my opinion, kind of stay longer and of course it typically covers a little bit more too, but I don't know, it just makes it easier to work with for me. I think it looks a little bit better with the finger versus the brush in this case. But this is not making me like jump out of my skin, but again, I wanna use it a little bit more and with different foundations, cause that's part of it. I feel like where it's hitting the foundation here, it's looking a little bit weird, but it doesn't look bad. Like, I feel like I've tried a few drugstore concealers recently that like right off the bat look bad. This one does not look bad, but it's not like blowing me out of the water yet. It's gonna end up being the theme of this video. I feel like the last one I did, like every, it was like hit after hit after hit. The theme of this one is, it's okay. Let me just try it some more. Just throw on the e.l.f. wow brow in my brows. So for eyes, I wanted to try the NYX Ultimate Glow Shots. So this is the shade Grapefruit Glow. It's a cream shadow. I don't even think this is necessarily new. It's just new to me. And I'm trying a lot of different kind of cream. Actually, I should call this a liquid shadow. I've been trying a lot of liquid shadows lately and just trying to find the best ones out there. I figured we'd give this a try. Just kind of tapping it so it's not like a huge glop in one place. I'm just gonna kind of bring it up to the brow bone because I was kind of picturing this as like a one shadow look. Hmm. It's not doing a lot, which I kind of knew. I mean, this is really close to my skin tone, so I was kind of expecting it to be Nothing wildly punchy. The finish of it is pretty though. It's not like shimmery. It's just like slightly glowy. It's kind of one of those like, is she wearing eyeshadow? I can't really tell. And it also just looks pretty on its own without any liner or mascara. Do you know what I mean? So we're gonna see if this creases. I'll put some wear notes down in the description box so I can update you like by the end of the night, how did it look kind of thing? Because this will be one of those things I'll be curious if it creases. Because if it doesn't, I would love a product like this to just slap on, it looks pretty. Like I said, you don't necessarily even need liner or mascara because it's just kind of a pretty finish as it is. And it's not too like in your face. It is kind of pretty though, right? Am I crazy? It's not super obvious, but it's nice. Like it's just a very clean, please don't crease. Please don't crease. I would love to be able to wear this kind of thing. I would, I could see myself grabbing this a lot. So I don't think, and of course I haven't tried any of the other shades. I don't think this is gonna be the kind of product that like, if you're wanting something super punchy, this is probably not gonna be the thing you want, but it's kind of giving me the Kosas eight second eyeshadow vibes, but this is back to like the better formula that they used to have. Kosas, if you're listening, just take us back to the old formula. Keep the cool new packaging, take us back to the old formula. I don't know what you did. This eyeliner, I'm so, okay, there's actually, there's two. We'll probably use both, okay. First up is the Sephora, and I know it's not technically drugstore, price-wise, it's in the drugstore range. 12-hour colorful eye pencil. This is supposed to be waterproof, and it is brown, and we are gonna see if this is a dupe for my beloved Makeup by Mario, the perfect brown eyeliner, of which I just ordered two more of online because that shade is available on Make It By Mario's site. So we're gonna see. I'm just gonna kinda tight line a little bit like between the lashes, you know? And the real test is if I put it in the water line up here, does it transfer down or not? Cause that's why I like the Mario. It doesn't, you know? This is really, really creamy. I'm not worrying about this being too perfect cause we're gonna put some liquid liner on it too cause I wanna try that out. So any, you know, jagged edge won't matter cause it'll be kind of covered. 
So this is giving me a lot of the feelings I feel about Makeup by Mario. So we're gonna see. Every part of me wants to just wear this alone, but I'm dying to try this. So we're just gonna do it, but we'll still be able to tell if it transfers to the waterline. So excited. They had a lot of different colors in this. So if you were looking for a certain like really fun color, or maybe you just like love using, I don't know what shades they have, like navy blue, purple, whatever, or black, of course. This is the CoverGirl Exhibitionist Lash Enhancing Liquid Liner. It is waterproof. And why is it lash enhancing? Okay, it's infused with pro vitamin B5 and aloe vera. It enhances the appearance of lashes while providing, of course, definition. So let's give her a whirl. Packaging's kind of cute. It's got that exhibitionist look to it. And it's definitely a felt tip, kind of like a marker. Wow. Ooh, that looked so artistic, Jess. That is very black and I'm not seeing a bunch of like running. You know how like some liquid liners, they'll go and kind of run outside the lines. I'm not noticing that at all. And this is in the shade matte black, which I think is kind of cool. Cause a lot of, I mean, I feel like a lot of them are kind of matte, but this one like does seem like pretty obviously matte. I mean, that is very black. That was so, so easy to apply. Might need to do a little cleanup, but I mean, this is really easy to use. I'm, I'm definitely partial to the felt tip. It does just seem to be a little easier to use than brush tips. This is, this is nice. <laughs> I have no complaints, none. I mean, they it just, it's nice. So that's exciting. Let me pop on a mascara and I'll be right back. Okay, while well, I'm applying this, this is just the Merit Clean Lash. Very pricey mascara. I do think it's really pretty. If you want a really soft lash look, it's not like a favorite because I typically want more than this, but it is pretty. But just saying, like, I have, there are better mascaras in the drugstore, but I'm, I do enjoy it. Um, but what I was gonna say is, oh no, what was I gonna say? Oh, the liner has not transferred down from the waterline. I haven't had to wipe it up once. Could it be? Yes, it could. <laughs> this is exciting because the Makeup by Mario, that liner is $24 and I have genuinely tried, you guys, like 10 to 12 different liners that claim to be like water resistant where they won't transfer. And I know that the what I'm looking for is very specific, right? Like I'm looking for something to stay up in one water line and not transfer down and blah, blah, blah. It's such a specific need that not everyone is looking for. But even still, if it stays there, that means it's gonna stay anywhere because that's the hardest place to get a liner to stay and not move. So I am feeling really excited about this Sephora um, stuff because like usually by now with virtually every other one I've tried other than the Mario one I would have to wipe it away already on that waterline. Have I over explained it enough? Okay. If you are a Disney person we launched our Disney podcast. It's called Disneyville and it's me and my husband Tyler and we're just chatting and we're you know like each obviously each podcast has a topic we're discussing um, but we put out our intro and by now I'm by the time you're seeing this I think our first actual episode is out. If not, stay tuned, but I think it is. So definitely if you're more of a YouTube -y person, you wanna watch the video of it instead of just listening, subscribe to our Disneyville YouTube channel, shameless plug. If you're a podcast listener, like you listen in the car, we're on all of the things, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen to it, Disneyville is probably on there. So go give it, a, you might listen to it and hate it and that's cool, man. Or if you're just not into Disney, that's cool too. But um, definitely give it a listen, let us know. If you like it, if you don't, subscribe if you do. Yeah, see, I'm like really trying to build this mascara. I totally forgot I wanted to try this Milani Gilded Mini. I think I've tried one of these in a video. I wanted to try this one again because this shade here is, I think, a pretty close dupe to my favorite shade in the Too Faced Sweet Peach palette that I just wear all of the time and that I'm literally about to hit pan on it and I don't think they make that palette anymore. And I'm like, oh no, what will I do? Obviously, I'm not gonna put it on now, but that looks really close. So if you're into these shades and you want a color like that, this is the Milani Gilded Mini in It's All Rosé. I will try that soon, maybe in a vlog, but uh, I totally forgot I was gonna do that too, and here we are, too late. So I'm gonna throw on a little bit of bronzer really quickly, and then blush, and then we've got, oh, actually we'll do, it's a liquid blush highlight, so we'll we'll just see. I think I might be able to use that as my, as both. Oh, too dark, Jess. This is the Haley's bronzer. It's really pretty, you just, like I just was going ham with it like I own the place. I think my, my my base is just too sticky. Come on, Jess. Makeup application 101. You should have like powdered the area. Oh well, we're just rolling with it. 
So let me swatch this. This is the Milani Cheek Kiss Liquid Blush Highlight. This is obviously meant to be dupe-ish for the Charlotte Tilbury like blush highlighter things. They've got similar packaging where it's got the little like squishy sponge. Um, yeah, okay, this is definitely meant to be a blush. Good, I'm glad I swatched it. So we're gonna try that as our blush highlight. I have not separately been applying highlight a lot. So I like the idea that this is kind of both. This is definitely not, like this color doesn't stay. The, shim the shine does, but you can kind of see, like I'm not getting like a bunch of that pink, peachy pink color on the actual skin that kind of blends away. So just be aware of that. I'm thinking this would be even prettier just over your blush. Not that this doesn't look pretty as it is, but if you wanted, you know, this would be one of those things you could just tap on top of the blush and it makes everything just, it, my gosh, that blended in so easily. And I don't feel like it's highlighting texture. I was kind of worried it might. It's really not. <laughs> this is always exciting. Always, always exciting. I wanna still put a little blush on top though, so we're gonna. Okay, so I do think that kinda of like took away a lot of that glow, so maybe we'll tap some of the glow back on top. I was curious if the glow would kinda of shine through, and I think it kinda of did, but not like. Okay, so let's get just a little bit more, just kinda of right on top, let's just go ham. So they have a couple shades of this if I'm right, so now I wanna check and see what else because now i'm curious if there are any where the color does linger around a little bit more and it looks more like a blush that's just glowy do you know what i mean but it does say it's a universal blush so i think that's the idea that it gives i don't know not a lot of blush but it more like a universal highlight but um i do think it's pretty the finish is really nice so i want to look into other colors but i could see this actually being something i apply on a day-to-day -day basis because it does i think make my skin look healthier but it's not so in your face like a line of highlight is, you know? Hmm, setting my under eye powder. So what are you doing while you're watching this? Are you getting ready for the day? Are you folding laundry, making dinner? What are you doing in the bath? I'm always curious. I mean, I watch YouTube during all of those times that I just named, so I'm always curious how like, what are your little rituals? <laughs> okay lips so i am so excited to try these so these are new from revlon it is their color stay suede ink i am curious this says it's like an eight hour wear it's primer infused this that and the other i just want to see so this is the shade that girl it definitely is like one swipe kind of almost yeah no it's pretty pigmented you say it almost looks like it gives that like blurred look but maybe not the other shade I grabbed was Type A. This is definitely like a nice berry red, which I love. It looks so pretty. I wanna try this one though, because I, I was just wearing like a red and another thing, but oh no. I'm now realizing I wanna try this lip liner and it might not work so well with this because it's more of like a nude. Let's try this on and then we'll try the lip liner as well with a nude color. So this is the shade That Girl. It's pretty like smooth, I feel like. I feel like that looks nice. Like talk about a perfect, very wearable pink for spring. I feel like this is it. It's not so bright, but it's not so baby pink that it like looks lighter than your own lip color, but it's not so bright that you're worried about it like being all over your face at brunch or something, I don't know. This looks really nice and the formula, it's comfortable. Now, eight hour wear, that's an interesting claim. I can see where it kind of dries down a bit and just remains slightly tacky, but it still looks nice, so that's, that's interesting. So I'll, again, I'll put some wear notes below, but I am enjoying the way it feels, but it does have like that tackiness where the lips kind of stick together, but it also still kind of looks dry. Very interesting. So now I don't want to use that lip liner. I'll save this for another. This is the Colorstay Longwear Lip Liner in Nude. Um, the idea, which I thought was really cool, is that each of their liners, they tell you what to pair it with. So they don't have a ton of different shades, they're basically saying use this for like any of these types of colors. And the idea is that you're kind of contouring the lips with it so it works with multiple different colors. So that I thought was cool. So I will use this soon and let you guys know because I think it's a dupe for uh, another lip liner based on some things I've seen. We're gonna see. But if I were to break down like, okay, what were my top three? I try to do this anytime I try a lot of makeup because it's a lot, right? So what would be my top three things that I'm so excited to use again that I think there's a chance you might also like, like right away? I have four. <laughs> First up, I really do think anyone would like the Milani Cheek Kiss. It just was so easy to use. You don't have to know what you're doing. Like you can put it just in the highlight regions. You can put it all over the cheeks. I mean, I applied a ton and I feel like it still looks really nice and healthy and pretty. And it looks like I know what I'm doing, whether I do or not. 
And I think that's really cool. So I think most people would like this. I also think most people would like this and even this shade because I just think it's really nice and it would look really nice with a lot of skin tones. This was the shade that girl, but find a shade that would work for you. I just feel like this is one of those things like, okay, if I were out for like four or five hours with someone and we were like maybe going to a coffee shop and doing a little shopping and this, that, and the other, this would be the kind of lip I would want because I wouldn't really be worried about it, but it would it would stay in place. It would look nice. I know it's there. You can kind of feel that it's there. So I guess this is one that I don't think everyone would like. If you think that like little tacky feeling would bother you, but generally I think this is a this is nice and it's gonna stay. I can I can tell it's gonna stay a while, but we'll see. This liquid liner impressed me, and I have not tried a liquid liner that I felt like wow about in a while because a lot. I mean they're kind of all built the same, and a lot of them work similarly, and they're most of them are pretty good like i you know but this stood out as really easy to use very very black very matte and nice so i'm curious if they sell a matte brown i want to try that covergirl you got a matte brown i'd like wouldn't that be cool so i want to i want to look i want to dig into this one a little bit more too and my bonus one is the sephora waterproof 12 hour colorful liner this is so good so the shade by the way i got i should have mentioned earlier is 13 tiramisu this deep, beautiful brown, it still has not transferred. This might, might be better than the Makeup by Mario one. And you better believe, I just ordered two. I didn't just order one, I ordered two. And again, I know I love that, so I'm not, but still, I could have saved a good amount of money. So I'm gonna use this the next couple days. If this is just as good, I might just return them, not even open them, you know? We'll see. So that is exciting. There are other products I'm I'm enjoying. I just want to try some more, like especially the SPF. I'm really enjoying. I think this might become a favorite, but I need to try it a little bit longer. Same with the uh, foundation, the primer, etc. We shall see. But oh, and the eye product. So far, it hasn't creased. We'll see what, what the day holds. And like I said, I can put the wear notes in the in the description. But. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I love doing these every few weeks. If you are into drugstore makeup or just new makeup or just chatting, whatever, subscribe to my channel. I do this kind of video a lot. Like I said, I'll link my playlist below. It is sunny out and like 56. I feel like I'm not wearing the right, I can fit, this is good in 56. I don't think I'm gonna need a jacket and I wanna go on a walk with my husband. So hopefully we're gonna go do that, but I love you guys so much. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my next one.